The last time I saw her was two years ago. It was just before the war, and great problems began. She met me at a downtown cafe, and handed me a disc full of videos she had taken around the city. She told me that everything here now made her sick and bored. The people, their obsession with money, and especially me. She said she was going to get away from us all. She said she had wanted to go to Nepal or Cote d'Ivoire, but that a family friend had offered her a free couch to live on in a suburb outside of Stockholm. And as she'd never been to Scandinavia, that's where she was going to go. She told me while she was there, she was going to write a screenplay that would make her famous. A couple months after that, I received a packet from her in the mail. Within the packet was a letter and another disc full of videos. She wrote me that even though she hated traveling on the road alone, she was traveling alone now and that she was quite happy. She was writing me from a small island in the Baltic Sea called Fora. Fora she said, was just north of a larger island called Gotland. And in Gutnish, which was the traditional dialect spoken on Gotland, Fora did not mean sheep island, as most people thought. Rather, it meant the faraway island. To get to Fora, she had taken a train from Sundbyberg suburb of Stockholm where she was staying, to the port city of Ninesim. Oddly, there was no one else on the train except for the conductor, and as she looked out the windows, she was reminded of how it felt when you looked out at the desert just before dawn. You see, she loved the dawn, because with each new morning, she felt as if there was the possibility to be someone new. From Ninasim, she boarded a large ferry full of politicians that took her to the medieval port city of Bisbee. As she wandered through the ancient streets, she thought, as she often did, about what it would be like to live in another time, to wear clothes like this, or this, to have been this person, and live here. She thought about how the greatest determining factor of what you would be able to do or not do with your life was simply when and where you were born in history. But she still had a bit of a ways to travel to get to Fora. So she packed up her bicycle and accidentally exploded a bottle of sparkling water she didn't realize was sparkling water and headed off. As she rode, her mind again went back to thinking of time. Had she done enough, she always worried? Had she done the right things? How did days always seem to slip away so quickly? She wrote that she was beginning to believe in God, but not in an afterlife. The next images on the disc were of a large cross at a crossroads. It was very eerie and very strange. She wrote that these images made her think of a survey she had come across online, that it stated, in the modern era, only 21% of Swedes believe in God, 
while 15% believe in ghosts. Passing by church after church, it was hard for her not to think of what that percentage must have been 500 or 600 years ago. Do you believe in God? What about you? Could you tell me about ghosts? I'd like to know. And finally, around 11.30 at night, just as the sun was setting, she boarded the last ferry that would take her across the small channel to the tiny island of Fulda. She wrote me about a peculiar dream she had the first night she spent on Fulda. The dream consisted of many muddled together memories of an unhappy time she had spent in Oklahoma. The dream focused on a man dressed as the devil who was set to perform at the downtown civic center in a satanic heavy metal black mass. However, to her, the real demons were to be found out front and they were causing quite a scene. Faith and justice shall live by faith. Flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. God command to make no graven images unto him. The just shall live by faith. She was awoken at 3.30 in the morning. As you can see, it's very bright at 3.30 in the morning in midsummer in Sweden. And also, from the sounds of it, birds were mating with fervor nearby. But it was time for her to begin exploring the island. The reason she had come to Fura, and what it is most famous for, is that it was home to Ingmar Bergman for the last 40 years of his life. The great director had shot some of his most memorable films on this island, including Persona and Through a Glass Darkly. He would later write of his first trip to Fora, I don't really know what happened. If one wished to be solemn, it could be said that I had found my landscape, my real home, if one wished to be funny, one could talk about love at first sight. And she wondered whether she had ever found her landscape, her real home. Was it this place? I mean, that's where she always said she felt at home. But, she wondered, why was it then that whenever she felt lost, all she wanted to do was be in a place like this. And as she sat there, looking out at the Baltic Sea, in perhaps the same spot precisely that Ingmar Bergman had also sat 40 years earlier, she tried to imagine herself packing up her bags, fleeing the city, and coming here to live. Would she be happy here, she wondered. Does happiness even matter, she also wondered. Free from the distractions of the modern world, would she also be able to create some great work here? 
have some legendary and then fabled love affair? Have a private cinema that screen films daily, and that be her only window to the outside world? That evening, she found herself in an airport hangar, watching a dance, inspired by the film Scenes from a Marriage. And watching the dancers move in slow motion, she thought about her marriage, now over. She wrote me that she was thinking about her memory of her love, and how fickle and elastic the nature of memory is. Indeed, she wrote, each new moment is always speeding away from the last with such force and alacrity that it almost made her shudder. And perhaps she wrote, as she had said many times before, perhaps that's how I justify my filming of every small detail of everything that fascinates me on this trip that I hope will never end, simply to try and not forget. She disappeared after sending me this tape. Some say she headed further north, towards the Finnish border. Others say she went for a swim in a fjord and never returned. Me, I still hope for another tape to arrive in the mail 